Here we go. Hey, David, how's it going today? Hey, good morning, Dan. Good to see you. Yeah. You know what? I'm always excited by uh, the way you talk with everyone. Uh, I wish I had your gift. It's amazing. It's, oh. it's really not a gift. It's just uh, being who you are, being true to yourself. Yeah. So you know what? Let's start. So tell me about yourself. How did you get started in photography and all that? Uh, so I, I'm David Rosen. My company is called Photo Innovations. I have been in business since about 1990. Uh, long and short of it, I'll look in the camera as I know a lot of you are listening. I'll do my best to do that. Um, I, I probably got my first camera when I was like 13 or so. It was a little Minolta rangefinder that my dad had given me and picked up an interest, loved photography, loved working with people, and loved how a camera could really have a really cool effect on people's personalities. And, Mm. And people always, they would shy away from the camera, but they always really liked to have their picture taken. And I picked up on that at an early age. So fast forward, um, grew up in Florida. I initially started school in Tampa, at the University of South Florida. But there was this really top-notch school called Rochester Institute of Technology, short RIT, which was, um, is still nationally and internationally known as one of the top photography schools in the world. Yeah, it's an amazing so, school. Yeah, so I took a whim and I applied and didn't think I'd get in, and I did. So I got in, and I went to RIT for three and a half years. My degree from there in photography was very specialized. I don't know if you know this, Dan, but it was in biomedical photography. Oh, wow. So, so what I used to photograph before I did people and so forth, um, I worked in the department, but we were support staff for physicians. So when a physician needed photography for a talk, for a textbook, for a presentation to other medical professionals, they would lean towards medical photographers to go into the operating room, photograph surgeries, whether that be heart surgery, orthopedic cases. We did a lot of plastic surgery cases. And even at a young age, I did two internships, internships at the University of Florida in Gainesville, whereby this was, <laughs> this was before digital guys, so we would go in, I would go in the operating room, I would dress completely in scrubs, had a great rapport with the docs and literally would stand over the patients over at the top where anesthesiology was and would photograph different surgeries going on. So it was really critical that there was trust between the, <clears throat> between the surgeons and the photographers or myself in that we weren't just there just taking whatever pictures. We wanted to make sure that the images that we took fulfilled the needs of the client, and I'm going to circle back to that during our discussion. So in this case, it was doctors. So uh, I'm going to get kind of gory here, but when you open up a chest and it's you've got different organs and blood and bones and stuff like that, when there was a certain thing that had to be photographed, I would always take the time and say, you know what, um, you got some. Again, I'm getting graphic. You have some bloody towels in here. Let's let's clean that area up. Let's siphon up some of the blood here. Let's put some fresh towels here. Let's clean the area up. Let's get the light on in the right area. And then we take the photograph. Hmm. So the surgeons appreciated the fact that just give me 30 seconds to let them know what I need to make their images look the best so that when they did their talk and presentation, our goal was always about the surgeon. And now it's about our client to do whatever we can to make them look their best okay. when they are so, presenting. That's awesome. Well, one quick question on that. Did the doctors tell you what angles or what uh, certain areas they wanted photographed or? It's a or good question. Sometimes they did. Uh, sometimes they did. Most of the time they left it up to us because they knew that we knew the lighting composition. So I had a strong science background, biology, and I knew different organs and things like that. But it was all about, and we'll talk, we'll go back to this, it was all about knowing the needs of the physician, whether if it's a, if it was a burn case, we knew we had to have, we had pre-op shots done before, and then we had, had to do post-op. But it was always knowing and have a dialogue with the surgeon ahead of time finding out what his or her needs were. So that was critical is building that trust and building that communication. Again, we're going to tie that into what we're doing now as well. So how did you go from doing surgery photos to people or people with smiling? Well, so that's a good question. So part of my job when I worked at the medical school was I'd say about 40, 50% of the time I was in the operating room photographing, but in the other times we would, we would do, let's say we're working with, um, uh, plastic surgeon. So we had to go in uh, and, and you understand at this time I was what 19, 20 years old. I was, I was very young. And a lot of the cases we did were um, 
breast augmentation photos. So understand that we always, always, always had a nurse in the room and we did photos with women with their arms up like this and did different sections like this and doing um, pre-op photos of different surgeries and things like that. So I was able to learn how to work with different types of people, men and women, how to make them feel at ease in what we were doing. And it was not only, not only the words that would come out of our mouth, but it was also the body language. And people can read on that when you're comfortable or not comfortable. So it was, I learned a lot working and photographing different groups of physicians, different groups of medical students. Um, and it was at that time that <clears throat> I realized like, hey, you know, to be, this is what I'm very passionate about. I think to be a good portrait artist in, in what we do and what, what Dan does, and Dan is phenomenal with this as well. Oh, thank you. It's, it's knowing how to truly, truly listen, right? And not, you know, put your agenda to the side, but if you ask a question to someone, shut up, right? And let's listen and really fine tune. And when, and when people see that you, hey, you're leaning in and you're, and you're nodding and you're making eye contact and you're not looking off to the distance, but you're really intrigued by what they are saying, then truly you have them, right? So building that relationship, building, having good communication skills and listening skills is critical in, in any line of business that you're in today. But especially when you're trying to get portraits of families and children, um, it's critical that you click, that you dive. I mean, in our consultations, I always ask the parents to bring their kids and they're like, well, they're young and all. I said, it's all good. I say it with a smile because I want them to feel comfortable too when they meet Mr. David, that this way that we go out to do the sessions, it's like, wow, he took that extra time. So we put a lot of effort and time even before we even start creating images to build that trust, to build that relationship. It's, it's relationship building. Um, but we'll talk more about that. Well, question for that then. How often do they come in with the kids? Do they take you up on that? That's, um, I would say 60, 70% of the time, the clients will come in with their children. Yeah. Um, because a lot of times they'll come in, depends on the age, I'll get down on, my, on their level and I'll, start, I'll talk to the kids first and I'll get them entertained. I try and childproof as much as I can. But I'll say, well, tell me, so you're in, you're six years old, Brian, you look like you're eight or nine. You just start talking and they get excited. You can see in the background, mom and dad are laughing because they're seeing that this is not a fly by not operation. This is someone who's going to take the time mm -hmm. to get to know their family, to create beautiful images. Um, I often, I always tell folks, you know, when they look at our website or if they go on Google and they do a Google review on us, um, they're always amazed at the reviews we have and they're like, well, you've got, you know, straight fives or no one's complained about you. I said, you know, <clears throat> and I always come back and I, I chuckle. I said, look, I'm just like you. I'm human. I'm not perfect. And I make mistakes. It happens. But the difference is that if we make a mistake, it's how we handle it, right? Mm. It's what we do. And it's not, pop, it's not passing blame. It's not getting defensive. It's accepting it and doing whatever we can above and beyond for the client to make it right. So um, I, I, think, I think sincerity comes from the heart. And I will say this, I mean, there are photographers, Dan, you know this, there are people that are just, you know, great, great behind the camera, right? And creating beautiful portraits mm -hmm. um, that have, um, excuse me, that their personal skills are not necessarily the best. Then there's other people that are great with folks. So I think in order to be successful, if you're, if you realize that you're not super strong in those, in those selling skills and point it, that out, then align yourself up with people that are, can be part of your team and do that. There's no, you can't be a jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's a village, right, Dan, you've got, you've got a city that works for you. I, I'm a lot smaller than my, than my friend, Dan. But Dan has got his wife, Pam, and an awesome staff that just truly gets his mission statement of what he does and builds that trust and builds that relationship. And it makes it so much easier for what you do when, you're, when your clients come and meet with you in person, right? Oh, absolutely. See, I wish I could talk like you. Um, my staff builds up the trust. 
I'm really good with people interacting with people. You see, we went on a couple of photo shoots together. So I'm really good at that, but I love the way you talk. And um, we're, I know you're getting into it, but I always love the way you said that the sale starts way before, like you're saying, like bringing the kids. And I love that whole, whole process all the way through. So I'm a big fan. You know, there's a, there's a book called, I wrote it down. We've all read it. If you have not read this book, um, continue watching this video, but the author is Donald Miller and it's called Story Branding. And it's an awesome book. It's a good read. It's a, it's a really interesting read. And the premise of story branding is just kind of what I mentioned back at the beginning is that you, um, you ask leading questions to your clients, ask them about how they met, ask them about their lives, ask them about their children, ask them where they're from, have different questions, let them speak. Because the truth is, um, people love to talk about themselves. People love to hear themselves speak. But the difference is, is that when you're asking these questions, you're asking leading questions to get to a desired result that you're trying to achieve, right? So it's a, it's a really great book that, um, there it is. Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. Um, I probably read it twice a year. Uh, it's clarifying your message so customers will listen. As Dan said, you know, asking questions, letting people speak, and then let, let them talk, right? People love to talk. But lead them into what, what it is that you do best. You know, I am a wall portrait artist. Uh, we don't take pictures. I, I don't even know what a picture is. I don't even know what a photograph is, but I do know what a wall, a piece of art is, a piece a wall portrait piece of art is what we do. So the language that we use elevates what we do. We, we use the word a lot in what we're doing when we start talking about what our clients are gonna have. We use the word investment. Um, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not a dirty word. We want people to value what we do. Mm -hmm. And by using leading words like that, they're going to understand that this is no fly by night operation, that this guy is very passionate or this lady is very passionate about what they do and want to provide something. This is really kind of funny for the last year. If I get, and I'm sure all of you will agree with this, Daniel will too. If you get another person on the phone that says, I'm sorry, <laughs> we're, we're late. We're behind. It's, it's COVID. It's, you know, it's this pandemic. It's COVID. It's, I'm so sorry. Well, you know what? Screw that. Get over the excuses. We've got something going on. Learn how to deal with it. I, I speak to clients every day and I let folks know that we are about exceeding clients' expectations, creating amazing pieces of art that they will love and have on the walls of their home for a lifetime. And not only is it important for them, but when their kids are growing up and they're coming back in and their friends are coming to the house and they're walking in there, they're going to they're going to look up there in the wall because my son Jacob did this and he would, he wouldn't say anything. He would look at his friends and go, Oh, look at, look at, you're so cute, Jacob. And he'd be like, mm, mm. kind of bashful. But <laughs> he loved it. He loved it. And kids love when they get that affirmation from other friends or family. So understand that it's a legacy that you're building. It's, I know how important it is for you, but it's going to be important for your loved ones, your family, which to me, if it's not, it should be for me. My family is the most important part of my life. One thing we always ask our clients, I'm going to jump into this, is when someone calls, I think I mentioned this to you, Dan, if you're not using this, I think it's a strong one. I always will ask people on the phone, again, doing story branding, I'll, I'll open up and I'll say, Dan, what is the most important thing in your life? Mm -hmm. And then I shut up and I hear different things. Sometimes I hear it's God. Sometimes I hear uh, my wife's kids, but always, um, or work, whatever, but always comes back. One of the top three things is their family. Mm -hmm. It's my smile. I said, so your family, tell me about your family. Mm -hmm. Zip it. Let them talk. Tell me about your kids. Oh, so they're, you got one graduating. Oh my gosh. So where are they going to school? Where are they applying? So you're down to like four or five colleges. That's gotta be tough. How, how's that going? Let them, let them talk, let them listen, and just, I don't know, maybe I have the gift of gab, but so my console. Know, you definitely have the gift of gab, I love it. Well, the consoles go longer, but I think 
if I try to rush that, then I'm rushing that whole process. And even my phone calls. And sometimes I get people on the phone and I'll go through some of this on the phone and then it comes down to price. And I will introduce, let people know where the investment will begin. And I've had people stop me like, you know what, David, this sounds, this sounds awesome. But you know, we're, and I'll say our gift, our gift portraits begin at 250 for a 10 inch portrait. And the 250, I said, yeah. And our wall portraits begin around 800. And if I get pushed back at that time, after, after I've taken the time to really build that value, at some point you have to realize whatever price, price point that you're comfortable with that, and Dan and I talked about this before we started recording, not everyone is gonna be your client. And that's okay. It's okay to say, you know what? I don't think we're a good fit. <laughs> I had a client just yesterday from a Big Brothers Big Sisters event, organizer, top donor who sent me this long email and she wanted to get the files because that's what she got from other photographers so she could print her images on a different substrate. So I, I sent the link to my friend Dan and a couple other good friends of mine that are very talented photographers as well. What would you do? And everyone says build the value, some said cut bait. Well, I got on the phone, I wanted to take some of the things that I've learned and, and really spend some time on the phone. So I, I spoke to Tara, Tell me about your family. Listen, she's got a 12 year old, a 14 year old. And um, tell me what they're into. Um, and then she proceeded to tell me that um, in the past she's had X, Y, Z done. And I said, well, let me ask you, have you ever had any like wall portraits done on the walls? Yeah, we, we printed our own canvas once, you know, a few years back, we, we had the file we did ourselves. So right then I was like, this is how I want this to go. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to tell her, no, that what we do involved that it, everything just, when we push the button on the camera, that's just the beginning part because it's what we do in the back end and post-processing and retouching to bring it to the quality of a photo innovations or Dan Doe piece of art that we stand behind ultimately and give you a lifetime warranty on what we do. And we actually come out to your home and physically hang it on the walls of your home. Mm -hmm. And I try to invoke that we're about, it's, we are a boutique, we are different, a little different than Dan. We are very small volume, but we are two things. All right, this is the most important thing. Write this down. Super, super high quality customer service and super high quality work. Um, you upgraded. So um, quality and service are equal. If you have one and not the other, you're going to fail. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you, you will fail. They have to, we, we are in a world right now where everything is immediate, everybody's multitasking. You have got to exceed clients' expectations. You've got to show the value and you've got to truly, truly believe in what you do. If you don't believe in what you do, as passionate as I am about it, people are gonna read through it and they're gonna, they're gonna this is bullshit, mm -hmm. okay? They can see through that. If you're having problems doing that, then do kind of like what Dan and I are doing right now, pick up the phone, have a friend come in, I did this, two years ago and sit through a sales session and let them grade you. Cause that's the only way you're going to learn. Mm -hmm. And, um, and when it comes to whatever your pricing is, you have to be very comfortable and have to ask yourself, would you pay for your own pricing? Cause I talked to a lot of photographers and they're like, well, I would never pay that. Well, <laughs> right. And if you feel that way, somehow, some way, either verbally or through body language, they're going to be like, they're going to read through that. If you're going, our prices are, uh, um, well, they begin at, uh, if you hesitate mm -hmm. in the least bit, I don't care how good your work is. If you can't say it with conviction and confidence, right out of the gate, it's over. You just kill the sin. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You You've right got here. to feel confident. You know, our clients spend between $3,500 and $10,000 conservatively. Yes, we've had clients who spent some below, and some higher, but I always come back and say, regardless of how much or how little you spend, you're still gonna get this beautiful piece of art with the same quality of work and the same quality of service throughout the whole process. Mm -hmm. um, and I say it very similar to, as I'm saying to, to Dan here on, the, on this call. Yeah, every time we, um, we get together, I love the way you, uh, you talk and you, you help me with my confidence quite a bit the way I talk to clients. Um, so I, I say thank you for all that. That's why I was dying to have you here and talk about it all.
So that's awesome. Appreciate it. It's, it's always good. You know, I've, I've come up to visit you two times and assisted you on your shoot stall, which has been a joy. And, and I've learned a lot how you do your lighting and how you work, which has helped me out. And, oh, uh, and also watching how you did some things in the sales room. Um, and, uh, and we would talk about those things afterwards, but uh, I, I too have learned from you and uh, your lighting is off the charts and how you work with your clients. I just wish I had as many clients as you do, which, um, which I don't because I'm going after, uh, I guess purposely a very slick niche of, of people sure. um, that will value what I do. And if they're, you know, if they're trying to steal the world from me, then I, I just, yeah. Well, the best thing, you know exactly what you want. You have a uh, laser focus for it. That's amazing. Most well, people it's don't. It's good, but sometimes it's not good because <laughs> I'd, like I'd like to be busier than I am. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's finding the people that, that truly value. And, and one thing I'll share with you, I, I mentioned to you, but we are, um, we are relo relo we're going to have another office down in South Florida. So I'm really excited about that because the work, and the demographics of the, down there is totally different than it is in North Carolina. So we're working on a product um, that I, and I've talked up with some people that is going to be night and day different than what that anyone of any of our friends have ever done ever, ever, ever. And it's going to be a, it's going to be really unique jaw dropping. And I think gonna, uh, trend setting. That's awesome. So that's the tease. I'm not, I'm not, that's the tease. I'm not going to say what it is, yeah. but stay tuned over the next year. You're going to see some big changes to our website, the style of work we're doing, the products that we'll be doing. But I will say this, it's going to be, uh, if I could give one word to describe what we will be doing the next year, breathtaking. Mm. That's powerful. Thank you. So, you know what, we're going to have to catch up in a little bit and, uh, See the breathtaking work. Um, I know we didn't show anywhere we're talking, but your work is absolutely gorgeous. Let me share the screen here. I absolutely love your work. Uh, thanks. I was done in uh, Montana, and uh, it's one of my favorite, one of my all-time favorite portraits we did. That was, um, but I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's all about if you know it's just like Dan like we talked about it's just taking the time to uh, just meet your clients and, and and get and get everybody to slow down because everybody today whether it's family or their children we're all multitasking we're all trying to do a hundred different things and I think if we can just if everybody if you could get people to meet with you and literally just come in and almost kind of do it just do, just pause mm -hmm. just just breathe, have people come in, they usually coming from work, when they come in, give them a glass of water, a glass of wine, let them sit down and catch their breath. Literally, sometimes just do a big, take a big breath in, um, and then exhale, but let them know that, um, it's just like if you go to, um, if you go to Louis Vuitton, or if you go to a high-end clothing shop, or a high-end salon, Think about when you go into those places, watch how those people interact with you. Watch how they're dressed. Watch how, watch, listen to the words they say. We can learn a lot from these upscale retailers. And, and Perfect. that's what a lot of photographers are, are doing to go after a, a certain niche of the market. Yeah. It's all about the experience. It's all about uh, going above and beyond. I, I had a client recently that we did portraits for. They got about five or six different portraits. Well, there was one portrait that they never, it was a picture of the mom and dad together. So um, we went ahead and I did a, an 11 by 14 and I put it on metal form and I wrapped it up. And at the end of it, I said, Chad, Jill, I said, I got something really special for you. So um, I gave it to my box. I opened it up and they're like, and they were blown away yeah. by that. I mean, that little gesture retail for probably about a thousand dollars. I think out of pocket, it cost me like thirty or thirty-five dollars. Sure, yeah, it, it's a no-brainer. So when you have clients like that, client spent probably seven or eight thousand dollars with us. Go that extra distance and give them something of value that you know that they'll like. 
because I knew when they were ordering the pictures, there was that one. And I just joked with them. I said, I said, I can't wait to get these to you. I've got a surprise for you. And I do this anytime a sale goes over a certain amount for us. I do it all the time. It feels good. I mean, it really does because um, they appreciate it. They know that you're giving something that they like and they understand if they paid for it, that would have been $1,500, $2,000. So that's awesome. the cost of pocket for us is, is minimal, but people will remember that. I, I promise you. Mm -hmm. And, and then, you know, I'm a big hugger and all that. We can't do that because of COVID. So I'm always like a fist bump or yeah. whatever. Um, sure. But just, um, and, and don't, and use the word thank you. Thank you so much, Dan, for, um, you know, selling your house and your car so that you could afford photography from Photo Innovations. We know that you will now be living on the streets in Massachusetts, but now that you have these beautiful portraits that you can put under a bridge, we, we, we thank you for helping our son get to school. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I, I think we're going to end it there. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much, sir. Once you get your other project underway, let's come back and review, and I'd love to see it. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you now. See you, pal.